Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Oh, yeah. It's World Dracula Day. Commemorating Bram Stoker's famous novel published on May 26th, 1897. You are listening to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. This is your co-host, Joel Private Dancer Cheeseman. This is Chad, Healthy Budget So Wash. And on this week's show, Google for Jobs Get Sleepy, InstaWork Makes It Rain, and Strippers Unite. Yes! Let's do this. Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. What's up, Chad? Oh, I'm just... Portuguese uh... Chad is in full effect today. We got the barb in the background. Uh, You're on some island in the tropics or some shit. Yeah, Yeah. looking good. Madeira. Yeah, it's known as the Hawaii of Europe. And Americans don't know about it because the Europeans, once again, like to keep the good shit from us. They don't want the Americans over here. So uh, I guess... uh, Every now and again, we find out about stuff, and we just kind of, kind of get there. One yeah. day. Let me guess. Yeah. Let me guess. The uh, the DeSantis Twitter meltdown isn't much news there in funky cold Madeira. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Nobody cares about that asshole. I did. <laughs> I did see it in my feed, and I thought it was hilarious because obviously Elon likes to make everything about him. Uh, yep. DeSantis wants any stage he can find because he's pathetic, and uh, they had a huge, obviously meltdown. Just the Again, everybody's been talking about how Twitter has been staying up, uh, upright uh-huh. with with all the cuts, <laughs> and it's like, oh, I mean, put it under a little stress, and uh, I think that's what you're going to see with DeSantis too. He's he's going to fold like a fucking cheap card table. <laughs> so I'm assuming you didn't tune in. Uh, I actually no. I actually tuned in because I just wanted to I just wanted to be part of it. And um, <laughs> you're wearing your DeSantis four, T-shirt at about four hundred thousand. Yeah, my DeSantis T-shirt is in the mail. Uh, <laughs> the mail is more efficient than Twitter these days, apparently. So yeah. it got up to four hundred thousand, and it, it was breaking. It got up to seven hundred some thousand, and then at twenty minutes, people just started bailing, and it got to like a hundred and fifty thousand, and then oh. it came on. I think it got up to maybe three hundred thousand, but I just—it's hard to believe that Twitter can't handle seven hundred thousand people at once. Well, when you get rid of most of your staff and pr- more than likely, yeah. I mean, they cut infrastructure. I mean, if you think about it, he was cutting everything. I mean, hell, he was he wasn't even paying his bills, for goodness sake. So, uh, yeah, it d- doesn't surprise me. It, I knew that there was going to be an event where there would be problems. And yep. this was a perfect event for a meltdown. And this is a perfect event for Shout it. out. Shout out. Let's get to some shout outs, shall we? So uh-huh. I'm going to go to an industry shout out first. Uh-oh. Uh, hiring solved. <laughs> Our friends, mm-hmm. sponsor at one point, uh, is apparently out of business. Uh, the HiringSolved.com site is done. I haven't seen anything in regards to messages to customers, um, no. but it uh-uh. certainly seems official that they are done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and for whatever reason, it, the, the URL doesn't even go to... Uh, um, Allegis, who basically bought the company uh, yeah. a few years ago. Uh-huh. So what we know about Hiring Solved, uh, started in 2012, Sean Burton, co-founder, who we know really well, no longer with the company or hasn't been for a while, apparently. Uh, they got some investment. They made some good hires with uh, like Jeremy Roberts, Jackie 
uh, Jackie Clayton, who then eventually left. We know they got sued big time by LinkedIn back in the day. These are what we know sort of publicly. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be surprised if Allegis isn't still writing checks to lawyers uh, for <laughs> cease and desist letters and LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn shit. But surprisingly, they didn't uh, sell the company. Apparently, like it was just too much of a hassle or they just didn't have the energy to do it. Um, my guess is they probably Allegis took in some of the hiring solve people that they wanted to keep and just said, shut the fucker down. But uh, bigger, bigger question, the whole sourcing thing, mm -hmm. you know, they did a big pivot a year or two ago, hire tool became hire easy, uh, and became sort of a platform for marketing, hiring solve, looked to go into ATSs and be their search engine and then seek out who has a good relationship with LinkedIn apparently um, is still kind of chugging. Yeah. To me, this is like invariably to put it short, like, LinkedIn won again. Uh, they put high Q out of business. And I think in a long winded way, uh, they've enabled uh, to put high or they've been able to put hiring solved uh, out of business as well. Yeah, I, I don't I think you give way too much credit to LinkedIn. I think you should give all the credit to Allegis and their their inability to actually manage technology. I mean, that's generally the biggest issue. They, they, they can't focus. And I've seen this in RPO and staffing for years. They think they they think they want to get into technology. They get into technology. Shit just fucking implodes. So, the the, the LinkedIn thing for them could be a huge diversion uh, as hiring solved was really moving back away from that, and they they were trying to actually dig into which I thought would have been perfect for Legis, the database, their candidate database. They have a huge fucking candidate database now. Mm -hmm. Matching off of that to current Rex, man, they could be popping. I mean, they could be easily, uh, but. Again, uh, you know, the, the staffing in RPO world, they're so focused on the old world of doing business. The new uh -huh. world just kind of like, you know, just slips away from them. Well, irregardless of that, hiring <laughs> solved out of business. My first shout out is to a movie. When we're talking about AI what could be better than a movie that actually shows almost the extinct the extinction of of uh, the human Shall race? It's we play the a game? It, perfect timing for the AI extinct extinction junkies out there. It, it's a movie about AI, how it how it lives with humanity, the the perspective, you know, fights back and forth, the extinction possibility. Just go to YouTube. Uh, search on the creator, watch the trailer. It drops in September. But I mean, I, we've seen these types of movies before, right? Where, where obviously AI takes over, the robots take over, so on and so forth. But this, just from a timing standpoint, nothing could be more perfect. Yeah. What's your favorite technology end of days uh, movie? I think war games, because again, you're talking about a computer that literally, and this is back, I mean, shit in the eighties, right? Where yeah. A computer hacks into the mainframe, right? And, and, and again, it, it, this is AI uh, way mm -hmm. back in the day, kind of like foreseeing what's happening. So I, I love that movie. It uh, has a lot of uh, intrigue kid who you know actually is is the hacker that gets into it i mean it's just it's a really cool movie so if you haven't seen war games dude you gotta you gotta gotta check it yeah. out ferris bueller hacks into uh the, the <laughs> national defense system it's great it's great great cameron's in it it's great fun it's a of lot course. of fun of course yeah oh, so yeah. 2001 was great space odyssey that was sort of the first film where mm -hmm. a machine uh kills people terminator for me life change like 13 years movie. old, go to see Terminator, scare the shit out of me. Yeah. Uh, that was Terminator. The first Terminator always uh, is going to be my favorite uh, machines kills humans movie. Not a machine though, Chad. Yes. Jim Brown. No, uh, he was a machine. He was totally a machine. He was a machine. He was the Terminator <laughs> on the football field for sure. If you see some of that old footage, uh, he was the Terminator on linebackers. Uh, back in the day. So yes. Tina Turner passed away yesterday. I know that's on top yeah. of mind for Best everyone. Best legs and rock a, and roll, baby. As, yeah. As a Browns fan, mm -hmm. uh, Jim Brown passed away. Um, football player, unquestionably, three-time NFL MVP, rookie of the year. 
eight-time first-team All-Pro, eight-time NFL uh, rushing leader, arguably the best lacrosse player in college history. They had to change uh, the rules because of Changed that. the rules. Played a played in a Syracuse basketball game where he, he scored 50 points. <laughs> like randomly off the street. Hey, Jim, you want to play some basketball? Scored 50 points in a game. Um, <laughs> he's He was a civil rights leader. Yes. It's a complicated history, uh, but we've lost Bill Russell uh, in the past year or so, two years. Mm -hmm. Jim Brown, obviously Muhammad Ali before that. Kareem is sort of the last of that group um, that's still alive. He was actually in MLK's um, funeral. He was yeah. one of the few that actually got to go in. Mm -hmm. He uh, got Crips and Bloods together in the early 90s. The L.A. riots got them together to, to chill um, on the violence that was going uh, there. So... Football and icon, but also civil rights, uh, complicated history. There are a lot of podcasts on it if you want to listen. But Jim Brown gets a shout out from me. Any Browns fan will know the greatest Brown of all time. Uh, Jim Brown will be missed. And if you haven't seen I'm Going to Get You Sucka from the 80s, <laughs> Jim Brown was also a movie star. Yes. And a great scene with Chris Rock ordering ribs. Uh, anyway, if you haven't seen I'm Going to Get You Sucka, uh, I encourage you to do that as well. If you learn nothing else about Jim Brown, watch I'm Going to Get You Sucka. Watch The Dirty Dozen. Yeah, that dirty dozen. is an amazing Jim Brown. I mean, he's he's one of the cast of characters, but amazing. He left, film left after nine seasons, uh, similar to Barry uh, Sanders. But he left because that movie, that movie was running longer, uh -huh. and he was getting fined $5 a day um, <laughs> by the Browns organization. <laughs> and Jim felt like, dissed. Yeah, he I'm felt out. dissed by that and yeah. said, I'm fuck, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> and he could still walk late into his life. So uh, well, I, I tell you the next shout out, it's going to love coming after Jim Brown and Tina Turner, uh, Mike <laughs> Fitzsimmons over at Crosscheck. So we didn't get a chance to actually sit down for a drink and chat at Unleash in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So he sent me a fine bottle of Woodford Reserve double all right, oak all right, bourbon. All right, all right. I promise we will sit down for a chat as soon as I'm back, Mike. Uh, thanks, and, and a shout out to we forget back in the day that they, we had to like find different classy ways. I remember I did as a, as a sales guy just to be able to get in the door, just to be able to you know get 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 a get a chat, an appointment, a call. What was right? your What was your best like guerrilla sales tactic? Best guerrilla sales tactic to get to get in the door. Yeah, easy. I mean, just the stuff that we would do today. We would send packages. We literally would find out depending on. Uh, I was in radio, right? In radio uh -huh. sales, so it was all about promotion. So we could actually put together packages and send them off, which nobody else did, right? Uh -huh. And send them off just as like little, you know, and with a little card in it. Hey, would love to sit down sometime and and have a chat. Worked hundred percent of the time. FedEx was great because you would be alerted when it was delivered. Yeah. And then you could call and say, hey, just want to make sure you got the package. Anyway, <laughs> still works today, kids. It's perfect. FedEx still works today. It's perfect, yes. <laughs> so I got to get this shout out in uh, quickly. Uh, yeah. you've, you've probably been, well, I don't know if you do fast food anymore, but in fast no. food restaurants now, uh, they have like a jukebox for soda. And you can get any flavor of anything that you want, push mm -hmm. a few buttons. So, so Heinz Ketchup and the Heinz Company said, hold my beer and have released the Heinz remix machine. <laughs> so now they have ketchup, <laughs> buffalo sauce, barbecue sauce, Ooh. like anything you want. The Heinz remix machine is coming to a fast food restaurant near you. And I, I cannot Jeez. be happier, my friend. We're, we're, we'll remember when we were young, we would take the glass and we would go for the, the, the soda the and we suicide. would get the, the comic. Yeah. The kamikaze, right? The suicide. <laughs> you could do the exact same thing with this, right? Uh, no, last, so shout out, last shout out, last shout out, kamikaze, uh, beyond we're talking about brain food if you haven't subscribed kids mm. to brain food uh, you got to check it out it is a weekly curated list from our friend uh, Hung Lee who actually does a hell of a job uh, we were showcased on last week's but it doesn't matter if we're showcased or not great content go check it out recruitment uh, recruiting brain food with Hung Lee do a search sign up have a good time Always, always love the love from our favorite what porn star. What are you star. doing, step bro? <laughs> Thanks, Hung Lee. And 
some of our favorite people are people that listen to the show chat, and it's mm-hmm. time to to remind them that they can get some free shit from us Ooh. if they go to chatcheese.com and click the free link. Uh, we're talking t-shirts from JobGet, bourbon uh, selection from each one of us, uh, from our friends at Text Kernel. Mm-hmm. Aspen Tech Labs is helping us give away beer, and Plum is helping us give away birthday rum uh, each month. So it would behoove me not to mention that to our listeners and did, did I just say, did I say birthdays as well? Did, I think, yeah. Really? I think I said birthdays. Can you feel I? the tension in the air right now? I know I can. Yeah, I can. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. All right. Birthdays are sponsored by our friends at Plum. Celebrating another year around the sun uh, is Bruce Carey, who whined about not being a uh, shout out last <laughs> week. So Bruce, <laughs> so Bruce, there you go, buddy. Uh, we'll make you famous. Uh, <laughs> uh, James Maley, Ooh. Tom Hunley, mm-hmm. James Andrechuk, okay. Sean Johnson, James. Travis Weinling, I believe, uh, Katrina Collier, who shares your birthday, uh, yep. by the way, Chad. And our favorite Canadian, I can Take him. off, will you? We're doing our movie. Don't wreck our show, you hoser. That's right. Shelly Billinghurst of the Flex Flex Podcast uh, is celebrating another birthday. And most importantly, all right, Chad. All yes. right, all right. <laughs> you and I celebrate birthdays this weekend. Chad is May 27th. I'm May 28th. We're on the same year. Yep. Little known fact about us on this show. You can send your e-gift cards at from Wooden Cork to joelcheeseman at gmail.com, uh, and I'll, I'll make sure Chad gets his <laughs> sure. his bottles as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But that is, that is another, maybe Happy my birthday! favorite birthday shout-out of the year because we're both, we're both on it. Oh, well, my favorite thing is events. You know I love to travel, Joel, and we are going to Wreckfest in the UK July 6th, Nebworth Park. Kids, you got to remember. If you've never been to a rec fest, you got to be to you got to go to a rec fest. And this isn't just about you going and learning. This is about you taking your entire fucking team. Take the entire team. It's, it's an all hands day. Enjoy the day. Learn. Have some beers together. Bond. This is good for what? Team cohesion. That's right. Team cohesion. Mm-hmm. Um, not that kind of team cohesion, Cheeseman. <laughs> then in se- September. Wreckfest is happening again in Nashville. Same, same, same motif, just changing the location. Both of these, both of these, Chad and Cheese are going to be emceeing the Disrupt stage, all technology, all day. So again, if you're in the UK, if you're in the US, go to Wreckfest. Actually, go to chadcheese.com, click on events in the upper right-hand corner, and... This is the first year for Nashville and in the U.S. So we have a 50% discount code, kids. Click on register here or whatever it says on, 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 the, on the header. You get 50% off for your entire team. Go make it happen. Wreckfest, UK, U.S. See Chad and Cheese there. Wreckfest is going deep <laughs> this year, Chad. And you forgot to mention Cole Cheeseman leaving. Oh. Oh, that's and right. Stephen McGrath are all apparently going to be uh, in the house. By the way, how <laughs> soft are Scots? How soft are the Scots? We we mentioned on a show that that Stephen is our favorite Scot, and the Scots came out of the woodwork <laughs> to whine about how 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 hurt they were that they weren't our favorite Scot. Who knew the Scots work were harder? So, Got to work harder. So so soft. And I, Chad, without you, mm. kinda. I'll explain why. I'll be at Sherm national in oh. june i'll be in the aaron booth that's e-r-i-n the aaron app they're getting cardboard cutouts of chad Sowash to make sure that i feel at home and that i feel like <laughs> you know that I'm, I'm warm and fuzzy in the booth we're talking chad heads cardboard cutouts and a full body chad uh in a bathrobe with sunglasses in sweden so if nothing else if you're going to sherm come by the aaron booth Take your picture with Cardboard Chad and the real Joel Cheeseman. Uh, it's going to be special, Chad. It's going to be fun. Well, tell Mike, after this, I'm going to trademark my likeness, just so he knows. <laughs> <laughs> Tr- 
Trademark my life. Topics. All right. Google for jobs. We've never talked about them before. All right. What's going on at Google for jobs? A listener in Germany hit us up this week with the following quote, something weird is happening at Google for jobs. (laughs) Most clients I work with have seen a huge traffic loss. If you do a search for new jobs, you get zero hits. Some smaller EU countries are hit really hard. Chad, what do you make of this? uh, Let's call it a hiccup. Or just an app. Uh, First off, Dylan Buckley over at Directly Apply, he originally turned us on to this issue, then uh, Oras Alkubasi, and then we got a post from Alexander uh, Tchaikovsky on LinkedIn. He actually went through and had some some ideas, a hypothesis of what it might Mm -hmm. be. It could be it could be an algorithm update, a technical issue, uh, Google ads rollout. So they're actually looking to try to roll those ads out or the killing or reducing traffic to Google jobs or, or what I think is they could just be fucking with everyone to be quite frank. Um, I mean, seriously, this to me is nothing more than understanding that this product is still an alpha and we really feel like Google should have their shit together. We should know better by now. Google doesn't have their shit together. It's going to take a while for them to get their shit together when they do then they're going to be dangerous. There's no question, right? But they're in alpha, kids. Not to mention, think about this. Shifting resources to the future, which is now Google's new Gen AI search, doesn't quite fit in with the current Google for Jobs search mechanism, right? As they try to switch over the the new Gen AI, uh, generative AI. Um, and you've got to remember what they did with Google for Hire. Google for Hire was actually, or Google Hire came out as an applicant tracking system. They were getting some great traction, and then cloud needed resources. They needed to focus because cloud was going to have a hell of a lot more uh, cash coming in. So they took all of those resources, said, oh, we're going to shut down Google Hire. See you guys. And they pushed those resources to, uh, to cloud. If you think about it, very simply, they could easily be pulling resources and just leaving kind of like a skeleton crew, if that, maybe 20% time, with the Google for job search as they're focusing on this new generative AI engine that could have jobs associated with it as well. So those are just opinions, but you've got to take a look at history and what they've done before. And all of this is true. So uh, there's plenty of opinion, plenty of fun, but I've got to say, no matter whether it's Indeed, Google, no matter, you can't put all your eggs in one traffic basket, kids. You got to diversify. And don't forget to mention how much Google loves the uh, your EU and all the fines that they, that they put out <laughs> on Google. Anyway. <laughs> um, Yes, I don't think this is a shutting down of Google for Jobs. This is not a we're backtracking, it's going to be gone. Um, there was a big update in March of the algorithm, mm-hmm. uh, taking away a lot of duplicate content, a lot of crappy content. That may just be filtering into their vertical search, uh, which is jobs. And let's be honest, there was a lot of crappy job sites that were just created to spam the shit out of Google for Jobs, mm-hmm. a lot of shitty sites, a lot of just scams. Um, a brief per- perusal of Google for Jobs uh, this morning. Most of the application sites are reputable names now. Uh, it's LinkedIn, it's ZipRecruiter, it's company websites. So it may just have been like the Google update got into jobs and now a lot of the crappy sites or the spammy sites are now gone. Mm-hmm. Um, that could be as, that could be the easy explanation. Maybe Europe trailed because they're not as attuned to what's going on there. The language differences, who knows? But it seems like Europe got hit a little more um, than uh, than Google did. And the bigger question is, like you mentioned, the generative AI, the open AI, the barred question, how, what are we going to do in AI? That's where the resources are going. Um, my guess is this hiccup happened at Jobs. A couple of days went by and someone said, shit, we got to get you know somebody <laughs> on this to fix this shit. And they went in and sort of, you know, dialed back whatever and flipped whatever switch to fix it. But I, I don't think Google for Jobs is going anywhere. I think it is, I don't want to say it's a side project, but when you think about the AI battle that Google's oh, yeah. going to have to fight, that's where their resources are. That's where their best people are. 
Um, the people yes. overlooking Google for jobs are probably 21 year old, uh, interns out of Berkeley. I mean, I, who knows, <laughs> but they want to monetize it. It's, it's, it's a decent product. People seem to, to use it. So I don't think there's anything to, to freak out over here about this thing. It's just a little hiccup with things that are going on at Google, which are getting curiouser and curiouser thanks to generative artificial intelligence. Yes. Let's go to our. Our favorite, uh, unless you have another comment about Google. No, nah, no. Nah. No, nah. okay. I, yeah, let's I go think, to our. That's it. Let's go, let's go to another uh, evil empire <laughs> company that we love. All right, Indeed Budgets. Let's talk about that. Starting June 1st, Indeed is implementing a minimum budget requirement for each job posted on their platform. Previously, companies could set any budget they desired. The introduction of quote unquote healthy budgets means that advertisers must meet the minimum budget requirement for each job they post on Indeed. Don't come to Indeed with your measly $25 job posting budget, Chad. What do you make of this news out of Indeed? So it's interesting because we actually got this information from the Recruitic, Recruitic's blog. Mm -hmm. And from that blog post, I'm going to do a little translation for, for everybody that's out there. Uh, quote, planning to use Indeed in the future? Question mark. It's essential for companies and talent acquisition teams to understand this transition and the reason for it, end quote. Translation, Indeed is jacking up minimum for starters and get ready because everybody, this is going to be an interesting ride. Next, quote, Indeed aims to increase job posting budgets to effectively achieve hiring goals. Translation, Indeed aims to focus or force higher budgets to increase revenues. They don't give two fucks about any of this, you know, effective hiring goals. Uh -huh. They don't care about any of that shit. They are doing nothing but trying to make more money. So what happened? We had cost per application took a shit, right? Cost per started application took a shit, right? Because they didn't roll it out like they normally do in chunks. They tried to do it all. They tried to jam it down everybody's throat. It didn't work, right? So Indeed's plan to force employers to CPA and CPSA model failed. So they're, they're looking for a new way to generate but more, but, uh, more revenue. It's just that simple. So to be able to try to put a spin, which I love how Recruitix does because they have to be diplomatic. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But... That's not what's happening. They're just looking at different ways to squeeze, whether it's low end, high end, more cash. And remember the cost per started apply that they're still gonna try to roll out kids is literally just the repackaged cost per click for enterprise. Because Indeed knows that enterprise has much higher budgets and they wanna soak those big companies with higher prices for no reason. So that's a long-term strategy. This is just a Band-Aid to try to get to that CPA, CPSA. Mm -hmm. By the way, we have, we have some footage from uh, Indeed's strategy meeting around 60 this 60% of decision. the time, it works every time. <laughs> what, remember the good old days when it was like 25 cents a click? That's like, that was the, like the maximum mm -hmm. per click. Whatever your budget was, it could be a dollar. You get four clicks. Like, yeah. remember the good old days of Indeed? Um, yeah, so much of all they do is like throw it at the wall, see if it sticks. If people freak out, let's throw some different spaghetti at the wall. Um, I, I got to think that in a in a per application, per interested candidate world, um, if people have below budgets, they're going to get very few like clicks, interest, applications, whatever. In a click world, you can get a lot of applications. For not a lot of money. So much of Indeed's business is small, smaller companies, middle, you know, mid-sized businesses, or people that just want to, like, they want to test Indeed. They want to like give it a give it a you know a spin, see how it mm -hmm. goes. Um, how much of it is programmatic? Programmatic, we know is pay per click. We know that that budgets can be whatever. We know that mm -hmm. there's a lot of flexibility and. Things are optimized to get the most bang for your buck. This seems more like you're going to give us X, whether you like it or not. There is no, like, we're the big 800-pound gorilla, what we say goes, and we're going to get at least this much out of you, 
whether you like it or not. Um, I don't know if companies will hate it. Uh, it depends a lot on what the minimums are. Nothing I saw in the news was what that minimum would be. Yeah. Um, is it a hundred dollars? Is it five hundred dollars? Is it a thousand dollars? Uh, they'll certainly probably screw that up and then go back to something lower or higher. Who knows what what will happen there? But yeah, Indeed continues to throw shit at the wall. Uh, it seems very disparate and confused as usual. It seems fear fear based decision making, uh, panic maybe uh, at this point. But yeah, I whatever. Indeed, it's it's another week, another weird sort of decision uh, that you're making. Well, the I days love... of focus are gone at Indeed. That's oh for god. Sure. Dude, it, it, they're, they're reeling. I mean, they really are to, kind of, to come up with this shit, to be able to come out and try to push the narrative of healthy budgets. That's what this mm -hmm. is all about. This is all about you. We're just trying to get you what you need to fill that role. Fuck you. That's total bullshit. You're trying to squeeze me for more cash, right? You're looking at the lower end. You know that the smaller companies, you probably have a little bit more wiggle room with. Um, but you got to be careful because that shit didn't work with CPA either, right? You fuck that up. So you got to be careful going into it with these minimum budgets, which is exactly what Recruitics mm -hmm. is calling it because that's what it is. It's not a healthy budget. So they're trying to play this narrative game on we're trying to help you. And no, you're not, dude. You're just trying to push the coffers, a little bit more money in the coffers. That's right, kids. Take it from me. Anything healthy is bad, including healthy <laughs> budgets. <laughs> We'll be right back. Instawork Insta in the news, Insta the San Francisco based company that connects hourly workers with available shifts has raised $60 million in a series D round wow. to enhance its use of AI and machine learning. This brings the total funding for Instawork to $160 million with a valuation of $760 million. Oh, I wanted to play the unicorn soundbite, <laughs> but I cannot, unfortunately. Instawork. Plans to use the funds to develop AI-powered training and certification programs to help workers mm -hmm. upskill and access higher-paid job opportunities. Another win for the essential workforce. Chad, what's your take on the news? Do we really need AI for job matching in the hospitality space? Really? I mean, is hospitality really that complex that we need AI? No, we don't. But that's where Instawork took advantage of an opportunity and went after the AI cash that's floating out around there, um, which might be smart because if you need more runway and you can lean heavy on the quote unquote, we're going to build AI into our platform, you're going to find suckers out there with money, right? Everybody wants to spend that chat GPT cash, right? How are we going to do that? Um, it's good for them. But you don't need AI for matching in this space because the requirements for those positions are very basic. Now, if they were focusing on conversational AI that would drive scheduling, engaging uh, employees to pick up shifts and those types of tasks, then I would say that makes a hell of a lot of sense. But matching, no, right? I, I think they're, to me, it was a cash grab. It's they, they saw an opportunity for more money and they went after it. So good for them. But to be able to say that this is around matching is total and utter bullshit. That escalated quickly. So remember when uh, Handshake raised money and said it was to take on LinkedIn? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, yes, sometimes yes. companies need a reason uh, to make more money uh, from their investors. Look, this is one of the one of those things that we we've, we've said for a long time. It's a good idea. When Snag a Job launched their app called Snag, uh, that was basically <laughs> like, "Hey, look at opportunities today, and what do I want to yeah. do today?" And like, mm -hmm. build credentials and badges around, "Hey, I'm a great burger flipper, or whatever, and I can go take my skills to any burger place in town and pick whatever hours I want to do it." 
it's a good idea. It's flexibility. It's like what I want to do. I don't want to drive. I don't want to deliver food. Like I want to cook or I want to wash clothes or car, whatever it is, right? It's a good idea. Yeah. Snag a job, maybe too little too soon or too late. I don't know. Yeah. Um, there are other, there are other services here that, I mean, this is going to get competitive. Uh, Snapshift in our backyard here in Indianapolis. Uh, Quick is another one. Obviously Uber, DoorDash, all of those are trying to get into the, uh, the, the, the marketplace and build engagement and brand awareness. Mm -hmm. To me, this is simply, they need to consolidate these companies. Um, and frankly, I think they're going to use the money that they've gotten to go buy up a snap shift or quick or some of the smaller ones. Some are, some are dedicated just to restaurants. Some are dedicated just to certain things. I think the money needs to be used to start consolidating these competitors. Cause ultimately just like with Uber and Lyft, there's going to be a Coke and a Pepsi and Instawork needs to make sure that they are at least Coke or Pepsi. Otherwise they're Fanta. And nobody likes that unless they're on <laughs> unless they're on vacation in Madeira, uh, apparently, based on the bar in your background. But anyway, um, yes, I think AI was ML, whatever, is a lot of like uh, cloud cover for what their real aspirations are, which I Runway. think is to gobble up as much market share as possible. Yeah. Um, maybe grow uh, internationally. Uh, they're still pretty much an, a U.S. based effort. And I think there's a lot of opportunity around the world. Um, but yeah, they're going to need a big boat to do that. And I think the, uh, the money that they got is going to help them do that. So I think there are great platforms that are out there that are doing this right. One of them being Harry, which is literally kind of like a point to point solution. They're, they're building an entire ecosystem within that platform. Uh, and then our friends over at our work, right. Mm -hmm. But companies need to understand that it's not just about reaching qualified candidates. Just ask Mod Pizza. Oh, great segue, Chad. Great segue, which leads us to our next story. Mod versus DJ Saul, or also <laughs> known as uh, Goldman Sachs. So it's a tale of two companies. In one corner, we have Chad's friends at Goldman Sachs uh, who have agreed to pay $215 million to put an end to a long-running class action lawsuit that accused them of systematically underpaying women. DJ Saul and the legal team struck a deal with 2,800 female associates and VPs. It's a feel-good story, if you will, Chad. Uh, let's go to our second contender, uh, the Tale of Two Cities, if you will. Uh, one of our favorite companies and certainly one of my favorite pizza makers, Maud, is eliminating background checks for entry-level roles. Chief People Officer Dana Eberhardt recently told an audience that Mod's goal was, quote, to be the leading employer of individuals who face barriers to employment, end quote. Chad, your thoughts on Goldman Sachs and Mod and a tale of two companies. Yeah, I think this is this is perfect because this is definitely the yin and yang of companies. So you've got the you've, you've got the the assholes over at Goldman Sachs, and then you have Mod Pizza. So you know where I stand. Let's dig into this. So twenty eight hundred women impacted overall two hundred and fifteen million is close to seventy seven thousand dollars per person. That seems mm -hmm. pretty pretty big, right? Seventy seven thousand dollars still not enough, kids. Goldman Sachs. Reported. Did you take out the legal fees on that calculation? Dude, Did you take dude, out the third still, that go to still <laughs> the reported net revenues of Goldman Sachs in 2022 was 47 over 47 billion dollars and their net earnings were 11 billion for the year ended in uh, 2022. So. $215 million is fucking cash out of the, the coins out of the goddamn couch for God's sakes. Yeah. So we need to, if we're going to, if we're going to take a look at actually providing, this isn't a fine, this is squaring up what Goldman Sachs fucked up. They need to square it up. That's awesome. They need another billion dollar fine on top of this from the U S government going into the actual coffers mm. to be able to stop companies from doing this stupid shit. Goldman Sachs isn't going to stop. There's no reason for them to because you hit them with a little piss ant fine, right? On the other side of the fence, you've got Mod Pizza. Background checks. They've taken around out background checks. They're hiring individuals uh, with cr uh, criminal records, helping them expunge criminal records, individuals with disabilities. Background checks slow down the process. 
when it's not necessary and it's a waste of money. Time, you lose candidates. When you lose candidates and you can't fill positions, you overextend your current staff. Your current staff gets pissy. They treat customers like shit. Churn starts happening and the cycle of lost revenue gets worse. Then you hear asshole owners spew the phrase, people don't want to work anymore. Well, well, Mod Pizza is only doing the logical thing. They're getting positions filled faster. They're, extend, they're extending their talent pools to second chance candidates, individuals with disabilities, just to name a few, so that they can fill positions and not overextend employees, which keeps employees happy, current employees happy, and it makes for a better customer experience. More return customers, more revenue. So it, it's very simple. Mod is just being smart and they're taking advantage of talent pools that nobody else is even trying. They feel like there's too much risk for it. They're even helping expunge criminal records. The loyalty there is amazing. The individuals who have been involved in the justice system, that's what they call it, uh, have a higher rate of retention, higher promotion rate, and higher engagement race, uh, rate across the board. From a mobility standpoint, MOD is, taking, uh, is talking about Things like bachelor's degrees, high school complete, completion, uh, career development, and growth within the company and outside of the company. This is how you actually create a culture that wants to stick around. Loyalty. Because they feel like you give a shit about them. And the actions of MOD actually demonstrates that they do. Even though it's good for business, right? If you take care of your people first, and that's yep. job one, then the revenue... If you've got a great model, the revenue is going to come. Yeah. You know, on the, uh, the Goldman story, like I'm convinced these big companies have a playbook, whether it's, whether it's Facebook or Google in, in Europe or their, their attorneys do. Yeah. I mean, like they're in law school, there must be a class of like the, the, the bullshit, uh, guidebook or something mm -hmm. where like yeah. if we're sued. Step one is this. Step two is this. Step three is this. And we keep like hammering them and wearing them down, hopefully. And if they don't wear down and we know that we're going to die or we're going we're gonna to be in trouble, then let's make sure the calculus around that and what we're probably going to have to pay is in line with what, you know, what we can do very easily. So there's mm -hmm. very little fear with executives to do things. It's sort of like do whatever the hell you want. We at the legal team will make sure that the fines will be negligible, that the, the backlash in the press won't be, you know, detrimental to growth or, uh -huh. you know, uh, and by the time this happens, we'll be beyond this and whatever we're building and whatever uh, in the database or our, our ad product will be far superior in, in return for this small fee that we're going to have to incur. So I'm convinced there's algebra around this and that companies just don't give a shit. And until yeah. there are perp, until there are perp walks, until GJ Saul's in a, an orange outfit, orange jumpsuit behind the, behind the DJ table. Um, not much is really going to happen. We're going to have these stories um, going on and on and on. Mod Pizza, big ups to them. Uh, we first talked about them, uh, I think, when their ad ran with actually an ankle uh, ankle monitor on one yeah. of their employees in the ad. Like, holy shit, a company actually did this, not in a press release, but actually put it on you know network television. That was huge. And we continue to talk about them. I love the term they use, uh, justice involvement. Someone who's who was yeah. justice involved or involved yeah. with justice. That's much better than like ex-con or whatever the hell language I've been using for the last 10 years. So I got to get justice involvement in my lexicon. Um, but you're right. I mean, in terms of retention, uh, recruitment, think about how many people that have a record never even apply to a job. Maybe they apply to a couple and it's like, well, you're an, you're an ex-con, like we don't hire them. How many of those people just say, fuck it, uh, there's no hope, right? Yeah. And yeah. along comes Mod and says, we're not even going to do a background check on our entry-level jobs. Like the number of people that that probably appeals to that yeah. have never even considered going into the workforce is huge. And it's an yeah. incredible uh, community service, really, that Mod is providing. And it's unfortunate that we're not talking about more companies uh, following Mod's lead. Yeah. And we watch this stuff, so we would know. But yeah, big ups to, to Mod. 
totally courageous. Uh, Got to get them on the show and talk more about this, shine a light on what's going on there. Uh, and by the way, there's a Blaze Pizza and a Mod Pizza. The Blaze Pizza is closer to me, but I always go to Mod because of shit like this. So it does do something. And I spend a lot of money on Pizza Chad. So it does do something. It does do something uh, to the bottom line. But yeah, major, major applause to Mod uh, DJ Saul. Does he even know about this? Probably not. He probably got a little. It's, it, little it wasn't a big enough blip on the radar for him to give a shit. Yeah. Executive summary. No. <laughs> uh, all right. Dancers at the Star Garden Topless Dive Bar. That's a mouthful, pun intended. Uh, in Los Angeles have voted to become the only unionized strippers in the U.S. The National Labor Relations Board announced that the employees at the strip club Voted seventeen to zero. Seventeen to zero. It was it was unanimous in favor of joining the Actors Equity Association. The campaign at Star Garden highlights issues such as sexual harassment, unresponsive management, and an unsafe working environment, which I've never seen at a strip club that I've attended, Chad. None of that is is present. It's very present in all of them. Anyway, Always topless present. women are people too, Chad. What's your take on this news? Yeah, we, it's fairly simple. 17 to 0. I mean, th there's obviously a problem in this place. In, in many places, the the question is, you know, can we can we actually get more of this happening? We from a unionization standpoint, not just strip clubs. I mean, this is an opportunity for the people themselves to be able to get together and have somewhat of a collective bargaining agreement, right? We know that wages and and, and and live livability, I guess you can say, is, is incredibly low in this country, in the United States, because the corporate machine, which you know we've we've built GDP on for God's sakes, has been printing out cash, keeping it for themselves, pushing it to the you know rich stockholders. And ladies like this, there, there's two things that they can do. They can continue this and get into a, a union or they can go to OnlyFans. They can go to OnlyFans where they don't have to worry about that asshole who has had four tequilas and is getting grabby, right? They, they can scale what they do as opposed to when you're doing that, 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 that dance on the stage, it doesn't scale. It happens in the moment. That's it. But if you're doing OnlyFans and you can record it, you can scale it. I mean, we're starting to see one or two things happening that live show is starting to die and go to OnlyFans, mm -hmm. uh, which I know is sad for you. It's very sad for me. <laughs> You're right. The local strip club is a staple in every community that should be cherished, and the loss of it would be just just detrimental uh, to everyone. Uh, so it, this is a great retention tool, okay? If you can go to a, a strip club that's unionized, and mm -hmm. you know that your your brother, not brothers, your sisters, I guess in this case, <laughs> are fighting for you in a group as opposed to being on your own and you know just showing up. I think it's a great retention tool. It's not like you know scabs are going to come and take your jobs, right? Like it's not as if strip club owners can go like, oh, there's a there's a whole group of strippers right here ready to take your place. So there's there's real loss of of money if these owners don't sort of uh, support unionization and support um uh, the strategy and and frankly chad i don't i don't care how attractive you are if you're not happy in your job the work is just going to suffer and that's not good for anyone these ladies nah. are doing god's work and i'm going to do all i can to commit my hard-earned dollars to the unionized boobies if i know a strip club is unionized i'm going to go support it and i urge all of our listeners to do the same we out we out Thank you for listening to what's it called? The podcast. The Chad. The Cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout outs of people you don't even know. And yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses. And not one word. So weird.
Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!